thinking of projecting Tony Robbins out to the end. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love about everyone. Thank you. Um, I wanted to share that um, I once was taken through an exercise by Susan Hyatt. I don't know if she's still in the room right now, but um, here she is. So um, she said, Sarah, imagine this. You're at the Martha Beck Summit. Martha has summoned your entire tribe. You've got two minutes to go out there and tell them what your message to them is, what they need to know, what you really want them to know. And the truth is now I have eight minutes. But if you'd like to have your future forecast, I suggest being Mrs. Susan Hyatt. <laughs> So what I'm here to talk about is big change and what I learned about how much more magical and much more easy it can be, more simple it can be uh, when you take a journey with the beasties or the wild animals, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And if you want to talk about t tough changes, try to be in conversation with the guys that you're working on, all the physicians that you practice with. You're under six months sabbatical, it's time to go back, and you have to call and say, you guys, I'm not coming back, because it turns out I've learned that wild animals have messages for us. <laughs> and I'm going to be spending most of my time really listening closely for those, but I've discovered that one of the most important things that I haven't learned right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had not yet met the honey badger at that point, because if I had, things might have gone a little bit more on that in a few minutes. So, um... What, about two years ago, I was just in this, actually in this very same building at the meet and greet, and I was terrified and excited. And inside, I knew that I wanted to change my life. I knew that I wanted to be with humans. I wanted to get out of my room with a little microscope and like open up and, and inspire others to change their lives. But I really was sort of overwhelmed and exhausted and confused and didn't know how to do that. So I somehow stumbled into this concept of this ancient idea that animals, wild animals in particular, might have some sort of messages for humans. And they might actually, odd as it seems, offer some sort of energetic assistance to humans, which as crazy and in many cases that sounded, I was like, you know what? I kind of like that idea. And so I began to notice what animals were showing up in my life. And so the first animal, I'm going to talk about four animals. There have been many, but I'm going to highlight four. So the first beastie to darken my doorstep as I started to pay attention. At first, these bears showed up in a dream. And then, when I was walking in my neighborhood, this bear, a bear with her two mother cubs, showed up in my walk. And this bear's message to me, as I was really struggling with this idea of I want to leave my job, which was a deep, dark secret I hadn't told anybody, but I really wanted to, but I didn't know how the hell I was going to do that, for a variety of reasons. And the bear told me, she said, you know, Sarah, and she kind of pointed off into the distance, which was kind of down a hill, and then there was like a nice ocean down there. It's really not that far where you want to go. It's really not that far. And all you have to do is stop every once in a while for a little bit of honey. And she actually showed me how you could like dig around in the tree stump and get honey. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I'm like, you know, it was such a simple message and it sounds kind of trite, but I was like, you know, I feel better. <laughs> I believe this bear. You know, it just, I, I don't know, but I thought, that sounds pretty good to me if it's not. And it's downhill. I mean, you know, it's like maybe a roll down the hill. That sounds pretty good. It turns out later I would be surfing on some of those waves in the ocean with Susan Honnell, wherever she is up there. She's right there. Um, so that was the bear. She was very mothering too, and it was, it was a wonderful encounter. And after that happened, I, I felt um, I felt less alone in a strange way, which may sound again crazy, but I'm just just sharing my own experience. I felt less alone. The second beastie that I ran into was a little less mothering. I was on a trip to South Africa with a dear friend, a visiting family, and uh, had an encounter with a black mamba snake. And black mamba snakes are known to be, according to Wikipedia, the most venomous and highly, well, I've got a man, sorry, and highly um, venomous snakes and most aggressive on the planet. And at that point, I knew that animals had messages full well, and I knew they were really helpful, but I was like, you know what? I don't really want to get a message from a black mamba snake. So I just basically plugged my ears and closed my eyes. It was just like, no. And I blocked it out. But as time rolled on, I knew, I knew that there was something with this black mob and I needed to address that. So about three months later, when I was feeling a little more courageous, after lots of conversations with the bear, I decided maybe I can sit and talk to this black mob snake. So I sat down with her, and what she told me was, I want you to get up and dance. And I was like, 
no, but can't we do something else? Can we go look over here at some, you know, there's something shining over there. I just saw that, and she's like, no, I want you to get up and dance. And what she really wanted me to do was step up to the plate and really step into my own power. And looking back over my life, I realized how many times I had, add, had been called to step up to the plate and dance, and I had not. I had refused the call. And I decided, you know what? I don't want to live that way anymore. I'm ready. I'm ready to dance. And so I said, yes, I will dance with you, Black Mamba. <laughs> and that was crazy. It's so weird, but so... What happened after that was a really a wordless experience, which is really what a lot of the beastie encounters are like. Um, no matter how they occur, whether it's in dreams or whether you see a beastie in a YouTube video or you see one in the wild, um, it was a wordless experience. And I felt filled with a peaceful, powerful energy. And I had this sense that I could do and I could handle almost anything that was going to happen next. And it was a good thing because the next beastie to show up was the honey badger. And many of you have seen the video of the honey badger. I think it has like 70 million hits on YouTube. And I, I always tell people, go out in the wild. It's, it's really, it's so wonderful. You don't want to miss that. But sometimes the beasts do come to us on YouTube. Now the honey badger, if you've seen the video, this, this beastie is just, she's fearlessly attacking, you know, she's diving into bee caves, getting stung by hundreds of thousands of bees. She's up in the tree with vipers biting their heads off. I mean, nothing will stop her. And one of the things about the honey badger is she really does not give a rat's patootie what anyone thinks of her. And I kind of figured, like, honey badger, my hunch is she's got a message for many of us with that many hits on YouTube. But the message for me was that it was time for me to fearlessly plunge in after my heart's desire and to do it with a reckless disregard for the opinion others. <laughs> so, that's the honey badger. It's good stuff. The next animal, the next beastie, is the elephant. Now, elephants are amazing animals, and I could go on for hours about how much I love elephants, but one thing that's really neat about elephants is if they see something they want, they go get it. So, like for instance, in South Africa there are these things called marula trees. Elephants love marula fruit. They get wasted, they party. It's like that's some kind of a elixir in it or something. So anyway, if there's you know a marula, you know they've emptied maybe all the marula fruit off the tree, but there's one more and they want to get it. If they can't reach it, they simply will take their trunk, wrap it around the base of the tree, and rip it out of the ground <laughs> so they can get what they want. So the process can be kind of messy. But elephants usually get what they want. This is Alice, and she is a very salty packager. And she has basically told me that, you know, what I've learned from Alice is that strange and eccentric is not just okay, that it's awesome. And that, you know, I, the reason that maybe some people don't get me is I was born to freak. I was born to be a change agent. I mean, it's okay that not everybody gets me. And so anyway, that's Alice. And what I guess what I've learned from, we're on Alice later, um, what I've learned from the beasties is that we're all connected. We're connected to humans, the beasties, the sun, the moon, the stars, the, the ocean. You know, we're all connected. And we're all each here to, to express our own unique beauty on our journey here on the earth. And um, as, as Marianne Williamson says, we were all meant to shine. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And when you allow your own light to shine, you unconsciously give others permission to do the same. And so I just want to invite all of you guys to you know, notice what beasties are showing up in your life so that you too can courageously and enthusiastically go after what lights you up and in turn set the whole web of life ablaze with your light. So, yeah.